Hello, welcome to World Harvest Community Church of God, located in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where our vision is to reach the world, reap the harvest, and embrace our community. We're so glad you joined us this morning. Come on in as we worship together. I know you'll be blessed. Good morning. Mothers, we're going to worship God like we've never done it before this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together.
worship you this morning, God. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. You are worthy. You came out of your way. You sat down to speak to me. What amazing grace you've shown so patiently. And you.
family and from the very outset we want to say to everyone happy mother's day to every mother 
uh, every aunt, every grandmother, great grandmother, for those that uh, have acted in the role of, of being being a mother to someone, we want to just say Happy Mother's, mother's Day. Day. Man, the world cannot do without mothers. If it was all just men, um, many of us would try to find an isolated island somewhere. But we thank God for mothers. Um, they teach us, they've shown us how to love and to care and to show kindness. Um, so we thank God for um, every single mother there is. And I, I believe, did I hear you saying Happy Mother's Day too? Yes. Well, can you speak up please? Right <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. You want me to say Happy Mother's Day? Yes, yes, oh. go ahead. Pleasant, wonderful, exceptional Mother's Day to you this morning. All mothers, whether you are a natural mother or someone that has taken over in the role of a mother, Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Amen. God bless you all. Um, we have a few things that we're, we're going to do this morning. Uh, we're fortunate the, the young people, some of the youths and um, young adults, they uh, put together they put together a short video just to say um, Happy Mother's Day to everyone. So um, anytime we're ready to roll, we, we can roll that uh, footage, all right? We, we, uh, they did a, a Zoom session and then just produced a little video from it. Mom, I love you and no one can ever replace you because you're my heart and you're, you're everything that I could ever ask for. Hello, Mommy. I love you. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for when I want to talk to you. You're there for me. You stop and listen to me. Thank you for support throughout the years when I want to talk to you. You're there for you. Love you. I want to start by saying Happy Mother's Day to the matriarch of our church, Mother Unice Little. We love you. We appreciate you. And thank you for all your prayers. And I want to give a special shout out to Sharon Winterburn. That's my heart. I love you, Mom. And Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of World Harvest. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom, the beautiful Miss Donna Roberts. I love you so much, and um, you just know that even though we butt heads sometimes, I know you always have my best interest in heart, and thank you for all that you have ever done for me, and all that you're continuing to do for me. Happy Mother's Day. To my mom, a happy Mother's Day. I just want to thank her for nurturing me, praying over me, and watching me grow up, and turning me into the strong, independent woman that I am today. And I just want to thank her for all that she does, sacrificing many things for me, and I love her. Um, I just want to say I love my mother, and she cares for me, and she's always right there when I need her. And sometimes it's, uh, when she's not right there, in my heart, she's always still there. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mother, and she has always been there through hard times, and I love her. Happy Mother's Day, woman and mother of World Harvest. I want to give a special shout out to my mother. Thank you for all your love, your prayers, the examples that you set. I love you and nobody, nobody can replace you. Happy Mother's Day to my mom and she is by my side always if she's not there beside me and she will always, she will always know that I love her. Say Happy Mother's Day to my mom. Even though she's far away, she knows that I love her and I appreciate her. And I thank her for everything she's done for me thus far. And I also want to wish everyone at World Harvest a Happy Mother's Day. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to the best mom in the world, because I have her. And I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to my grandma and all my aunties. And that's it. Hi, World Harvest. Um, i just like to wish everyone a Happy Mother's Day. Um, I would especially like to shout out my beautiful mother, Elaine Thompson. You are the glue to my puzzle and you are the pieces to my heart. I truly appreciate everything that you've done for me, the way that you've held me up and the way that you're conti you've continuously prayed and covered me and been there for me throughout all of my choices, all of the hard times that life may have brought. And I just want to say that I love you 
and happy Mother's Day from me and Jay. Hi everyone, on behalf of the youth department, I want to say thank you to all the moms out there. Um, we appreciate everything that you do, and especially to my mom since you have to put up with me all the time. I appreciate you, you know, I get on your nerves like 24 seven. Love you a lot. Yeah. Just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially my two mothers, um, Auntie Winsome and Millicent Rose McLeod Croxton. Uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do for me, and I appreciate that you guys love me unconditionally, and the sacrifices that you both make for me don't go unnoticed. So I just want to wish you guys a happy Mother's Day, and thank you for all that you do. So I want to give a shout out to my mom. Um, I'm thankful for everything she does for me, and I love everything that she's doing for me. And I appreciate her very much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to my mom for everything that you've done for me and that I love you very much and you're the best mom in the whole wide world. Happy Mother's Day to everyone at World Harvest and an extra special Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Candice's grandma. We love you so much mom, thank you for everything that you do for us, babysitting, putting up with us, all the prayers. Um, also Happy Mother's Day to the matriarch of our family, our Reverend Simpson, AKA Nanny. We love you so much. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you make and that you continue to make for your children, your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren. To both of you, we love you lots. Mwah. Mwah. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. All the mothers from World Harvest Youth Alive. We love you. Love you. All right. We hope that um, uh, mothers and um, and grandmothers that uh, you just enjoyed the expressions of uh, some of our young people and young adults. And we thank them for doing that um, for us. Um, and we ask that God will continue to bless. Now, what I've done, um, I do want to make sure I say Happy Mother's Day to again to my wife, Bridget, and also to my mom yes. uh, that is out there now, 80, oh, 80 plus years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I still call her mommy, although I'm a big grown man. Um, could have grandchildren myself, all right? But uh, mom, thank you so much. Uh, we love you as, uh, as kids, and I speak on behalf of my uh, other th three siblings as well. We, um, we appreciate the love that you've shown to us and continue to show us as our mother and always the concern that you have uh, towards us. Now, um, I got my wife a, a special... Um, Mother's Day card, and I'm going to ask her to open it on <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Go wow, a pleasant surprise! <laughs> oh oh my wow! Goodness. Happy Mother's Day! All right, so bright right. and beautiful. Uh, I need some adjustments on there this camera. There couldn't be right a day well too nice for you. Wow. Right, wow! Can you open it up for us as well? This is beautiful, a little flower pot um, card. <laughs> I'm going to hold it a little bit closer to the camera so that you can all hear it. with every mother out there <laughs> yeah. that is watching this morning every grandma i share my card with you happy oh, mother's day right. and, god bless you. and just to add to that um what lady bridget was saying as you saw at the beginning of uh, what the young people did we actually put the card on and this is to everyone uh every mother uh not just in the church but anyone that's watching and it just says this is a day for celebrating wonderful one of a kind woman. You're all that and so much more. Happy Mother's Day. 
All right, so that's to our mothers. We love you. And I, I've just got to say, I, I didn't hear Bridget mention her mom and her grandmother, right? Yes. She has a mom that is full of life and is, and is loving. And I can even say that even as a, um, a son-in-law, that, you know, the, the amount of love and care that she shows, I, I really appreciate it. And not only that, Bridget, as a grandmother, which is um, what, my kid's great-grandmother? And she is 94, Five. 95 years old, all right? And she's a wonderful woman of God every morning as well. She's on the prayer line, and she, she's a prayer warrior. She's always been a prayer warrior. And maybe one day, I'm sure you'll hear uh, those story, some of those stories from Bridget about her waking up early in the morning to pray. So yes. happy Mother's Day yes, again I, to everyone. Yeah, and happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Mom D, Auntie O, Auntie D, Auntie P, all of my aunts. These women of God has been so instrumental in my life. I just want to take a couple seconds to say happy Mother's Day to all of them, all of my cousins, my sister, all of the females in my family. And not only them, but all the mothers. My heart is with every mother this morning. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you all, and I love you lots and lots. According Amen. to Sister Parchment. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we, we, we just, hopefully, uh, this message will encourage someone this morning. But again, we want to welcome you to World Harvest Community Church of God. And um, thank God for this medium that you are able to watch us via YouTube, Facebook, also our website. Um, but we, we uh, desire as a church and as a ministry to reach the world, reap the harvest, embrace our community. So we thank God for what we're able to do now and we're gonna say that we're gonna do greater works in all three uh, parts of ministry. From 2020 began, we selected a theme, Kingdom Life, and um, the, the pledge that I made from the very first Sunday of 2020 was that we would, as, we would try to make this declaration every Sunday of 2020. And so far, we've been able to continue this. And so, uh, again, we're going to make the declaration um, because we're, the words of our mouth have power especially when we're children of God, all right? So we, we've taken um, parts of texts out of several uh, Bible verses. The first one is Philippians 3, verse 20. Next one is Matthew 4, verse 17 and verse 23. And also Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. All right, and so uh, what we've been doing is we ask everyone just to repeat the words um, after me and, and say it with meaning, say it for yourself, um, that's, uh, that the words will take on life and take on power. All right, so uh, let's begin. My citizenship, my citizenship is, in heaven. is in heaven. I will preach, I will preach. The, kingdom the kingdom of heaven, of heaven. Is, at hand. It is at hand. I will preach, I will preach. The, gospel the gospel of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. I, declare I declare healing, healing. of all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases is in the kingdom. I will cast out the spirits with his word. Amen. And the theme that we have, you see there uh, for 2020, kingdom life. We are declaring that um, we are belong to the kingdom of God. And everything that uh, is available in the kingdom, all of it, the privileges, all of the resources that is in the kingdom of God, we're declaring because we're children of God that they are ours also. Amen. Amen. So this morning, um, I'm going to be uh, sharing a thought. And again, it follows with the theme opportunities. Um, and this is Mother's Day and... Um, I, I was looking at a character uh, in the Bible, and, and um, this involves Elijah and a widow in, in a city or a town called Zarephath. All right? 
So the theme that I have for this morning, and I pray that I can minister to a mother that maybe you're feeling challenged um, right now. I know right now there's so much going on, and I realize uh, that there are a lot of single parent mothers, and I can just imagine the amount of uh, stress that you're under. Um, sometimes we're trying to balance everything with make with the income, with maybe taking care of the children, especially if they're younger, and maybe having uh, issues with even someone uh, watching your children or child while you are at work. So uh, we pray to God for your strength, and then on top of that, they're at home and maybe needing help for more help than normal for for their homework or or their classworks online. So we're praying specially for you. We're also, uh, we'll keep in prayer um, those of us or those that have lost their mothers, right? Your mother uh, maybe has passed away. And, um, and I, I realize that every time, this time of the year, uh, for some is a really emotional moment um, because we, we understand that most mothers, there are very few that aren't, but most mothers are nurturing and loving and kind and just giving all the time and so we understand that uh, if your mother has already passed and you're waiting to see them when the Lord returns that still these moments um, can be mixed emotions so today just focus on the, on the good memories um, that your mother uh, has, has left with you so um, we're coming from 1 Kings chapter 17 this morning and uh, in this, this talks about Elijah, right? And again, uh, the theme is this, because I'm going to usually, uh, when we preach, we tend to preach and focus on the main character. Um, but I'm not going to fo focus on Elijah this morning. I want to focus on this widow, this widow mother. She was a single parent, not by choice, but um, we see her show up in a powerful way in the Word of God this morning. And here's the theme that I've selected, and it applies to you and to every mother, I believe. And the theme is this, on the opportunities. God sees your heart and your acts of kindness. Right? And once again, God sees your heart and your acts of kindness. Amen. And... Uh, I, I think all of us can agree those two things are so special about mothers. So in 1 Kings chapter 17, we see that um, I'm going to read two verses to, to focus around and then um, the way that I share minister the word, I'll uh, usually go through a few verses within the chapter or the, to add to the text. So if you were focusing, um, please, uh, if I can see on easy worship, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 11 and verse 12. And then we will just um, work our way through the word of God. 1 Kings 17, 11. And it says, um, and you, um, Jamie, you can actually give me the NIV. I'm deciding to try and work with you and, and just make our... Uh, the text more understandable for everyone. So this is what he says in verse 11. As she was going to get it, he called, and this is what he says, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. And she turned in verse 12 and says, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug and gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. So those are the main scriptures that I would like to share. So let me now go back to um, this chapter uh, regarding this story, true story of Elijah and this widow. We found that, uh, as you begin in verse 1, that God sent Elijah to talk to King Ahab to tell him that there was going to be a drought. 
that it would not rain for several years. Mm -hmm. And um, we found there that after Elijah showed up on the scene and he shared this with the king, Elijah ran for his life. Why? Elijah, Ahab was a old king, he was an older king, but he had a young wife named Jezebel. And even in the world, you've heard songs that centers around Delilah or Jezebel, or you've heard remarks concerning Jezebel. And she was not a person that worshipped God. She was an idol worshipper. Yes. And then Jezebel, she was very controlling. And in fact, there was a wicked element to Jezebel. So Elijah fled. And the funny thing is, if you read the details and even check out where Elijah went, Elijah actually ended up in the area where Jezebel's father was from. So Elijah was, you could say, hiding in plain sight. And God had commanded him saying, look, go down to this particular area and I will send ravens to feed you. All right, and I'm going to go on now. Um, I will send ravens to, to feed you and to provide bread for you or food for you. And this is in verse 4. It says, you will drink from the brook, chariot. And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So, Elijah had a basic diet. Water from the brook and bread provided by the ravens. All right? So let me just make sure I, I give you a point, to, a point to, to just focus on and to remember this morning. In that fourth verse, I want you to probably underline where it says, I have directed, directed, directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So God gave the ravens directions that Elijah would be there and they would provide provisions for Elijah. Wow. And he says, so he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Keret Ravine east of the Jordan and he stayed there. Mm -hmm. And then now he tells us the ravens brought him bread and meat. Yes. In the morning mm. and bread and meat yes. in the evening. Yes. And he drank from the brook. The brook. Yes. Wow. I'm just amazed, even just even from now, just thinking about the text. God told Elijah that I've directed the ravens or a raven mm -hmm. to supply you with meat mm -hmm. or food. Mm -hmm. And then in the very next verse, it tells us that Elijah was given food to eat twice a day, wow. both of bread mm -hmm. and of meat. Mm -hmm. I'm almost daring to say, and maybe you can speculate with me, that this raven was stealing the food maybe right <laughs> off King Hayab's table. <laughs> maybe the raven liked Jezebel so much that he, that raven made sure every day he went <laughs> to the area where Jezebel was getting her food from. As anyone's imagination yeah. stretched as far as mine. God is a provider. Yes, he is. So even from the outset, I want to just tell someone that God will provide and I want you to believe that He is a provider and the provision can come from anywhere that God chooses. Yes. Hallelujah. And now we go on to that 8 verse. It says, And the word of the Lord came to him, that is to Elijah. And it says that in verse 9, it says, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I've directed a wither there to supply you with food. Once again, the word shows up. Just keep it on there for a moment. It says, I have directed 
a woman there to supply you with food. So God basically said the same thing to the raven. And now he said the same thing to, El to Elijah concerning this woman. But here's a very important thing to, for us to remember right now. Timing is critical. Timing is critical. Mm -hmm. Right? I know that maybe I can be guilty of this. Is that sometimes we hear Holy Spirit speak to us and we say, um, you, know, you know, there's no rush. I can take my time. All right? But... Sometimes it's more important that we listen closely and act instantly. So in that ninth verse, the very first three words, God said to Elijah, go at once. Go at once. So leave immediately. Leave immediately and head towards Zarephath. And we found that Elijah was obedient. And now, um, so if, if you want to make a point, you can just put this point down. Timing is critical. Timing is critical. Sometimes the doors of opportunities are there based on our timing. Right? Sometimes Doors of opportunity open because we're at the right place at the right time. And we've heard that saying, but it's still, still simply saying timing is critical. At the right place, at the right time. So we went down um, to Zarephath, verse 10. And when he came to the town gate, he arrived sticks. Do you see what I mean about timing was so critical? He arrived at the city. And if you can bring the camera back on me just for a moment. He arrived at the city. And at the moment that he arrived at this city. Then we found that right there at the gate. At the entrance to the city or to the town. That he saw a widow there gathering sticks. Now, I, I don't even understand the dynamics there that at the entrance to this town that a widow would be able to find sticks. And all that I can probably think of is that, that um, surrounding this town, and maybe it was a small town, uh, it was surrounded maybe before the drought took place by uh, a region that had lots of trees. And so there was lots of dead, dead um, sticks or, or trees with, with just their limbs lying around. And the reason why I say this is because um, remember that where Elijah was by the brook, Elijah from the, some of the commentaries that I read was there maybe up to two years. So they were now into this famine for about two years. And God had been providing for Elijah at the brook, but the brook died up. I want to say to someone, sometimes it seems like things are going great, going well. And in life, sometimes God causes things to happen. Causes or allow things to happen. And the important thing is this, is that in those times we keep on trusting God. In those times, we don't look to, turn, to curse God and say we're going to curse God and die. It seems funny. God had sent Elijah to King Ahab and told him that there's going to be famine. But here's the thing, that the famine also affected Elijah. He was given as a prophet a message to take, but still this message Still what was going to take place would affect his very life, his very existence, his very survival. Because sometimes uh, we might think that because someone preaches a word or gives a prophetic word, 
that the consequences is not a global consequence or the consequence is not for the whole nation. So right now, uh, maybe some are thinking that, well, with all that's going on with COVID-19, it should not, there's, there's no way it should touch me. It should be away from me. Everything should be going just like before. But sometimes when God steps in, it even affects those that he has called and chosen. I can refer to so many characters in the Bible that because of famine, that because of they've been taken from their land, that because of what someone has chosen to do to them, they've ended up in situations that seem detrimental, although they're faithful and serving God. All I can say to you right now is that in order for you to survive, continue to serve God. Continue to serve Him. He's going to make a way. In the time of famine, in the time of lack, God will make a way. Amen. Hallelujah. He will send a raven if he has to. Yes. Whatever God has to do, he will do it. Hallelujah. To preserve and to protect your life. It might not be everything all that you want. It might not be all of the luxuries that you're used to and that you want. But God will cause you to survive. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yes. Praise Some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. With Jesus on your side, everything will work out right. You're going to make it. Yes. You're going to make it. Amen. So we find there that, um, that even where God told Elijah, I will sustain you. I will provide for you. That eventually the source there dried up. It dried up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even with the promise, even with God himself speaking to Elijah, the source dried up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I want to say is to, to everyone is sometimes some things are permanent. Sometimes God will cause a shift. God will cause a shaking. God will cause things to move. But in those moments, I'm challenging you to still trust God. And here is the point of trust that you need to get to. That you go at once. That you act immediately. Timing is critical. If Elijah had waited one more day, that widow along with her son would be sitting in their house, sitting back, ready to die. But because Elijah acted right away, the timing was perfect. He arrived at the town, and when he entered near the gate of the town, he saw a widow there, Searching and gathering sticks. Now the rest of this, and, and you know, my wife is here and she's much smarter than me. And You know, but I'm still curious about the timing. Because I sort of wonder how much details did God tell Elijah? Because right? I know my wife. And I know most women, and even my daughter. I could walk down, we could leave from here now and tomorrow. Um, and my wife could ask me, what color was I wearing yesterday? And do you know, as a man, I might forget that she had on a green shawl with a white dress. But if I ask my wife next month, what was I wearing today? She would tell me the color, the shirt, the tie. She would give me all the details, even your hat on those glasses on your eye, on your, around your eyes. Details. 
So I'm curious, how did Elijah know that this woman was the right woman? Because all the text told us is that God says, go down to Zarephath. I've prepared someone. I've directed a widow there to supply you with food. But what it tells us then, he then turned and began a conversation with this woman. So the only way that I can logically process this was that she was the only woman at the gate. And because God said, go at once, then Elijah maybe right away he assumed, here is a woman, I'm obedient to the word of God, and whatever is told me, that means she's there waiting for me. And not only that, Elijah had a point of reference. The point of reference was that God sent him, by, sent him by the brook Sterik. And then God provided for him twice a day food and meat. And provided water from the brook. To you that is there, God always has a point of reference. In your life there is a point of reference. You have a testimony. You have a testimony of what God has done in the past. And if he's done it then, if he did it then, he can do it again. He can do it again and again and again. You see, God loves when we brag off on him. Yes. Amen. When I think of the goodness of yes. Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. hallelujah. All I needed was Minister Craig right now on that point. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God for saving me. But not only that, God thrives on the fact that when he does something, we give him the glory. We point men back to him. Can you make sure that this coming week that you, even if it's over the phone or on Facebook, whatever your social media is, that you tell someone about the goodness of God, that you send them an encouragement, a short testimony of what God has done for you. So now he shows up here and it tells us that he called to her and this is what he asked. Now, I know, I, I'm believing that God didn't even tell him what to ask this woman. I'm believing that just as a man of God, that he just had been on a long journey because actually, basically, Elijah had traveled from one region to another region. Right? So it was a long journey that he undertook. And when he arrived, he was thirsty. Remember, the brook dried up. So now he arrived at this, the gates of this town and he called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? So apparently, Elijah knew that the provision was not just for food, but also for water. So he knew there that water would be there. All right, bring, bring me Bring me back online and you see the scriptures there. But he says, bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink. So the first thing, Elijah was acting on faith. He knew that there was water there. And as she was going to get it, now it doesn't even tell us, and, and maybe it's just, you know, um, to keep the story short. And as comprehensive as possible, it doesn't go into details. Maybe, uh, you know, Elijah say, hey, hello, good morning, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe somehow she saw from the way he was just said, hi, prophet, how are you today? Right? But it does not tell us any of those details. All it says, as she was going to get the water... He called and says, and bring me a, please bring me a piece of bread. Now, I don't know about you, Sister Bridget, but sometimes my wife gets upset with me and my daughter. Right? 
So, um, give you a for example, and just watch your face as I give this story. I'm going to look at her too. Sometimes, um, she'll say like, um, I'm going to do some breakfast, or I'm going to have a sandwich, or, or you know, whether it's a head, or, or say, um, fish, or chicken. And there's something about me. All of a sudden, I'll start to say, well, can you butter the bread, please? Um, can you add some lettuce to it? <laughs> can you put some tomatoes on it? And I'll even go as far as this, can you put a little bit of salt and a little bit of um, black pepper on it? Um, and add a little bit of ketchup. Put it in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> I will literally take one question asking, do you want some? And I will make it into my dish. <laughs> but I realized, finally now, from looking at this text again, I thought I was abnormal, but I'm normal. <laughs> I'm normal. Because I see in the text that, that Elijah did the same thing. He asked, can I just get some water to drink? Oh, and by the way, can you bring me, please bring me a piece of bread? I know maybe sometimes I don't say please. But I'll say thank you. Can you please bring me a piece of bread? And this woman, this widow, now in the moment, and, and I, I can imagine all of the thoughts that was flowing through her mind. Maybe, yes, she realized that he was a man of God. Maybe he had passed through that very town before, and maybe she recognized him or even knew him, and, and it could even be vice versa. Maybe Elijah had met this woman before. But in the text, again, it does not tell us any of these things. But all this woman did in the moment, in verse 12, she said, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, she says, I don't have any bread. Just pause there for me. She said, I don't have any bread. The prophet Elijah asked for bread. And she replied, I don't have any bread. She answered the question directly. I don't have any bread. But here's the thing that I see also is that Elijah knew that she did not have bread. He saw her gathering the sticks and he knew enough that she was going home probably to bake a bread. But before the bread was even baked, before he even knew what she had in her, in her house, before he knew the volume of what she had in her, her house, he says, please, Give me a piece of bread. Elijah did not ask for all of the bread. Because sometimes uh, I think the interpretation is given that Elijah asked for the bread, but he asked for a piece of the bread. And, and, and she goes on to say, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. Right? She was honest to say what she had. She was honest to say what she had. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive in a jug. So she was going to make the last meal. And I don't believe as a good mother that she had shared with her son what was taking place. I don't believe that she would have told him maybe that this is the last of the meal because I, I sort of feel that her son was fairly young and maybe she had not been a widow for a long time. But she says, we're going home, I'm going to make, take the last handful of flour and the last olive oil and make the last piece of bread or bread and we are going to eat it and says, I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself 
and my son, that we may eat it and die. That we may eat it and die. Can somebody understand a point of desperation? Just think about where she actually was right now. She knew that all she had was enough just to make, just to bake a bread for the day, to eat it, and there was nothing left. And she had come to that point where she says, after this, my son and I, we will die. But here's where I see the theme for today. God sees your heart and see your hacks of kindness. God did not send Elijah to an ungodly woman. Somehow there was God inside of her. Somehow she had a relationship with God. God chose her out of so many others. And here's now where it shows up. That this widow, knowing, can't think about it mentally. She knew that the sticks that she was gathering was to make the very last meal. And yet, in the midst of it, what she did, she, the man of God said, Look, can you just bring me some water? It doesn't say or show that she fussed or even said anything. She simply went starting in her direction to get water. She was obedient and still even in that mode of mind and where life was, she was still willing and ready to give. But now it was when Elijah stopped her in her tracks and asked for bread, she shared, I don't even have bread right now. So she was living one day at a time. She did not even have a loaf of bread already baked and sitting there in her kitchen or on her shelf. This was the very last of her resource. And so she said, we don't even have bread. We're going to go home, take the last handful of flour and the last bit of olive oil. and I'm going to make bread. And we're going to eat it, and my son and I will die. But in the midst of it all, she showed kindness. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying and what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. The honesty is, would I do the same thing? The honesty is, would you do the same thing? Because with this, maybe someone would get into a mode where they would curse this man out. Where they would laugh him to scorn. But here, she was willing to tell him what the situation was. Let, let me just add to this. Sometimes deliverance doesn't come or help doesn't come maybe simply because we've not shared what our real situation is. But here's another point, even more powerful than that. I want to say to someone, do not focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you have. You see, when we focus on what we don't have, that can easily bring us and put us into a state of depression. All that we can see is the failings, the struggles, this and that. But instead, focus on what you have. I'm going to go home and make the best meal. It's going to taste so good. Just the right amount of flour. And I'm just gathering the sticks and I'm, yes, I was going to get the water to mix that dough. And then I'm going to just fix it up real good with that olive oil. Mm. 
focus on what we have. But here now, and you know, Lady Bridget, you can jump in if you have a thought, you know, you can jump in. Right. Now in verse 13, Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. One more time to you. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. And I'm saying to someone today, Don't be afraid. I'm saying to you, Don't be afraid. So Elijah went on and, and said to this woman, Go home and do as you've said. Now, which part of that is, is Elijah talking about? I, I believe that Elijah was talking about going home and baking this bread. I don't believe that in the text we can expand it out to say that Elijah was then saying to her, yes, go home and you and your son die tomorrow. So Elijah was just simply saying, go home and bake the bread. And he is now in the text. But he says, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Now, I'm sure, Lady Bridget, that you're going to have some comment on this part. Because I've got a little bit to say here. This woman just said, I have one handful of bread wheat or whatever to make the last bread of barley to make the last loaf of bread and you're now telling me to take that handful and to break it up into a different portion and bake you the cake first so that means I'm going to have to use up some of the olive oil to bake you your special cake. <laughs> mm, right there, some husbands and wives would have a fuss. Jesus, Jesus. Some marriages would have a point of reckoning right there. Yes. If the son knew, mm. may imagine what a tantrum maybe that son would have thrown. So he says, go home and do as you said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. So the instruction was not just to make the bread, but in your hungry state, in knowing what you won't have tomorrow, I want you to bake it. Don't even bake anything for your son yet and for yourself yet. Bake that loaf of bread and bring it to me. Bring it to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. And then he says, From what? But first make it. Bring it to me. And he says, From what you have. And then he says, And then make something for yourself and your son. I don't know if you want to show that text again. But he says, and then make something for yourself and your son. I, I find that this almost like, this lady, if she was just a regular woman, would have blown her top. <laughs> because he, he, to me, Elijah is implying, make sure you give me a nice Make, make sure you give me a nice portion to make me a nice bread and whatever's left over, you and your son can have it. You hear me out, out, out there? Whatever is left over, you and your son, you just make something for yourself. Yes. And your son. It could come across like Elijah did not care about the welfare of this wood, widow and the son. And even, not just from, from observing everything, but just from reading the text, that he did not care what would have happened to her next. Yeah, I think Elijah 
knew what was going to happen. And, and I think the, the main thing there was he was, he was looking to see what that woman was going to do. And I believe that that woman was a woman of God. I believe that she recognized that the person standing in front of her was a man of God. And because she was a woman of God, she knew or she realized and knew the principle that if you honor God, that God will honor you. And how do we honor God as women of God? We honor God by treating others not for our benefit, mm. but for God's benefit. Mm -hmm. So she realized, yes, this is the only cake I have, the only flour I have to make this cake, the only oil. But because the man of God asked me to bake me a cake first, I am going to honor God by honor his request. Mm. And mm. so she knew there was a blessing coming by taking care of the man of God because she's putting God first. Wow. Wow. You, you can tell my wife is a woman of faith. She said that this woman knew her blessings was coming, but I don't know all of that. <laughs> You're on your but, but, here, but here's what I see, is that Elijah did not give her an opportunity for her thoughts to start to think about the food tomorrow. Because in the very next verse, in other words, after he said what he said, he then continued. He says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. So Elijah now declares, it's not my words, but God is directing me. And this is what the Lord God of Israel. So he did not just limit it to, this is what God is saying to me, Elijah. But this is what the God of Israel is saying. Jesus. The jar of flour mm. will not be used up mm. and the jug of oil will not run dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elijah declared it in such a way. Hallelujah. The jar of Jesus. flour, and I'm declaring this Jesus. on your jar of flour right now, Hallelujah. in something in your life. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil, the very two last things you have for your su survival, the jug of oil will not run dry. God is a provider. He will provide whatever you have. Hallelujah, Jesus. God will sustain you. And Elijah went on as far as to say, it will not run dry until the day Glory the Lord sends God. rain on the land. Am I speaking to Glory someone Jesus. right now? The Lord says, it will not run dry until rain is sent on the land. Only trust God and believe. Trust God and believe. And then it goes on to tell us, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. Obedience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In this time, maybe, maybe God is saying something strange or unusual to you. Maybe he's asked you to do something. Maybe he's even asked you to call someone. Maybe he's even, in this time, he's even asked you to go somewhere. Can you... As long as you know it's the voice of God, can you do it in obedience? Do it in obedience. God says he will provide until there's rain on the land again. God will provide until there is rain again. God will provide until things come back to normal again. And I say one more time to you, God will provide until things are normal again. He's going to sustain you. He's going to keep you. So she went and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah, for the woman, and now it expanded it, it says, and her family. 
provision for Elijah, for the widow, and for her son. So God had taken what was going to be the last meal and it kept them through maybe another three, four years. Three or four years God sustained them for until this drought ended. But here, that's part of the, the message. In what I just said, God knew the heart of this woman. He knew that she would respond to Elijah the prophet. He knew that she would give up her last or share of her last. And these are questions that we can think about concerning our own selves, you know, or concerning even those around us. What would we give? What will we share? Even in the time that we're in. But she was willing. So because God knew her heart, Elijah was sent to her when Elijah passed so many widows with children. Brought him from one part of the country to the other. And it seems like the provisions was just for Elijah. But no, the provision was for this widow and her son. Sometimes we don't know how God works. We don't know how God will bless or choose to bless. But he will do it. So now it tells us in the 16th verse and that the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken Jesus. by Elijah. Hallelujah. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken, spoken by Elijah. The, word of the, Lord. the significant part of that is that it's the word of the Lord. We believe in the word of God. We believe that it's true and that it's life and that is power, and that is wisdom. That's what we believe. <clears throat> but now here's the other thing. This woman was obedient to Elijah, did exactly what he was said was going on, and we found that, yeah, their lives were preserved, and every morning they got up, there was more flour, and there was more oil. Wow. But here's the thing. <clears throat> the provisions was on a daily basis. So sometimes we want to plan and think so way ahead. But sometimes that's not, not how God provides. So even right now, maybe you, you've got to just keep in the moment. Thank God for the provisions today. Thank God for the blessings today. Thank God for making the way for today. But now here comes a challenge. It says, sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. Right? This widow's son became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. He died. This woman was doing everything that Elijah the prophet said and she was being in obedience to God and she had already proven that this was a man of God and it, the provisions was there on a daily basis and as we read the text, he actually was renting a room from this woman. So she had her house and then on top, he had a room that he was renting throughout this Drought, drought that was in the land. So he stopped breathing and he said, she said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Kind of question. Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Here we saw a widow woman that was so so amiable. At the beginning, she 
willingly went to fetch the water, willingly baked the cake, but now, because of her love for her son, her children, her family, she now becomes distraught. Why have you come here? Was the reason that you came here to, or to take, cause God to cause my son to die? Maybe someone, maybe you've lost, lost a, a friend or a, a relative somewhere along the line. And maybe right now you're questioning God. Why God? Why did you come here to remind me of my sins and that God will take the life of my son? Can I just give you some points here? The word of God in, says that there's a time for everything, a season for everything. And whether we are a Christian or not, there are seasons to life. And in the season that we're in, recognize it. But there's some things that, that is very, very important in this time that we're in. I want to just point it out to you. Your faith will always be challenged. Once again, your faith will, will be challenged. There will be moments in our lives that we come to a roadblock where things has not gone or seems to have panned out the way that we expected. And, and maybe in that moment, it will challenge our faith. God, are you really there? God, why can't I feel you? Why can't I hear you? God, why is this happening? Why am I not hearing you in this moment? You feel totally alone, like the prayer has gone up to the ceiling and it's bounced right back on you. Your faith will be challenged because sometimes it seems like, God, where are you? Hmm. But let me also remind you, your works of goodness, of kindness, will sometimes seem futile or sometimes it might seem, seems like it yields the opposite result. But everything is not all what it looks like. You've heard that saying too. The grass always looks green on the other side. It's not always what it seems that like it looks like. All I can say to you if you're in this moment where you know you've shown goodness and kindness to people around you. You've given up yourself. You've given up your resources. Don't, don't remove the blessings by, by talking bad about what you've, what you've done and what the expectations are. Still continue to hold on to the fact that you did good and that you showed kindness. Trust God in the process. I believe that everything will work out for the glory of God. Trust God trust. in the process. Jesus. Whatever you're going through right now, trust God in the midst of it. Whatever it might seem like you lack, talking right now especially to mothers that are single parents. Maybe there's so much challenges that, that I can't even imagine or fathom. Trust God in the process. Trust that he will provide for you. You are his child. You are his daughter. You are his son. Trust God. He will provide. And then he tells us in the next few verses, almost completed. He says, Elijah cried to the Lord. And here's what Elijah prayed. My God. Have you brought tragedy even on this widow I'm staying with by causing her son to die? So Elijah, now as a man of God, then went to God with the same question. Here I am. Provision is being made by this widow. But why is as her son died? Why, Lord? And he says he stretched out on the boy Three times. 
And numbers, you know, in the Bible are always meaningful. Three times. And can I just say this? Because God, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And can I point out that in Genesis, that Father, Son, Holy Spirit came together and says, and they said, let us make man. The Bible tells us he made man in his own image. And so I believe that three times was not just a random number that turned up here. I believe, and I will say it and declare it upon you even right now, even that dead situation that needs to come to life, to be brought back to life, I declare that it will come to life and I, I ask God to let it come to life now in the name of the Father, God the Father, in the name of Jesus the Son, in the name of Holy Spirit, three in one again working on your behalf to bring that situation to life. And so he stretched out upon this lad three times and he cried and then the Lord heard Elijah's cry. And a boy's life returned to him and he lived. The Lord heard Elijah's cry. So some of us, we've been praying every morning at a certain time of the day. I want to just remind you that God is hearing your cry. God is hearing our cry. Mm. And life will be sustained. Life will re return. And we will live and not die. Mm. Your loved one will live and not die. We are declaring it and we'll hold on to it. And we ask God to perform it. So Elijah picked up the child, carried him down. As you heard me say, I believe it was a young boy. Picked up the child, carried him down from the room into the house. And he gave him to his mother and said, look. Look. Thank you, Jesus. Look. Yes. Look. Look. Your son is alive. Son is alive. You see, when it when it came to the bread and the oil, it was a faith thing. But now turning up in this this uh, widow's life, Elijah prayed and brought brought the son to his mother and says, Look. Look. Your son, Your son is alive. Is alive. Hallelujah. I, I pray that some of us can start to rejoice even before we see. Thank you. Hallelujah. See the goodness and Glory see what God is going to do. And what God has done Thank and what God is up to. Jesus. That to that thing we can say, look. Glory to God. We can have a word of testimony and say, you know the times we are praying together. Look. Look. Hallelujah. That dead situation is alive. Thank you, Jesus. So as I conclude right now, keep, keep crying out for your children on Mother's Day. I want to declare to someone even right now, maybe you're separated from that son or daughter. Maybe, maybe even that son or daughter is, is restricted somewhere. I'm going to ask you, don't just pray about where they are and the state they're in and the condition they're in, but also pray about your expectations, where you want them to be, what you want them to do, to be doing, what you want God to do. I want to say to you, don't give up. Look, your son is alive. Your children will live and not God die. Your children will live and not die. God will keep and preserve them. These things we declare today in the name of Jesus. So keep on being good. Keep on being kind. God sees it. God sees your heart. And God will work on your behalf. That's the kind of God he is. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I want to just invite someone right now. Mother's Day and, and maybe we, we can't even do what we'd love to do, whether it's to go out and celebrate, to gather 
where they to maybe give some special gifts uh, to our mothers or those that have been uh, mothers in our lives. But can I ask you just to keep each other in prayer? Right? So I'm going to pray for the wayward sons and daughters. I'm going to pray for every mother that God will make and continue to make um, and preserve and make a way. And I'm also going to pay, pray right now also for even what we're facing where many children are at home and mothers are trying to balance everything. Right? I'm going to pray for your strength. Pray for your strength. To mothers, even on this day, just continue to love your children. Continue to point them in the right direction. Even at moments, they're, they're going to feel sometimes a sense of insecurity. Maybe wonder, what will happen to me if my mom takes, becomes sick or is not, not working? What will happen to us? Right? But I'm coming and we're going to pray even against that scenario. God will provide. God will provide. Let us pray together. God. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you and we present every situation to you. I thank you for every mother, every, the roles that they've played, whether their children are still young or whether they are now adults. We know that a mother's love never changes or never dies. And so, Lord, I present every mother to you their children to you, their sons, their daughters to you, the situation to you. We ask you, God, for every provisions to be made. God, as parents and even as mothers, sometimes we're most concerned about the one that seems to be wayward, seems to have gone a different direction seems to be always in trouble or always in conflict and uh, sometimes our thoughts are so focused because we're wondering where they are now what are they doing now what is going to happen to their lives right now and so lord we present those critical children to you god that you will rescue them that you will save them oh god that you'll give them peace and and bring them on the right track according to your words. Yes, God. That's what we ask, oh God. Yes. Lord, we ask you, Lord, not only that, but that you give them an expected end. Jesus. Oh God, that you will look and cause and bring help for their future, for yes. what they, number one, their relationship with you. Yes. Maybe with their employment, where maybe, maybe it's Jesus. also with their state of mind. We ask you, God, Jesus. to make everything good, make everything yes, right. Lord bring hope, bring future yes, to Jesus. that or to those children we pray. Yes, God. God, we ask you, Lord, on behalf of mothers, Lord, that you'll remove every fear. Yes, Jesus. Lord, so that uh, on top of bringing up children, they, they are not worrying to affect their mental state and, their men and also their physical health. But God, I ask you, God, that you will give them peace that they will just trust you. Yes. That they will trust you. Even if they don't know what tomorrow will bring. That they will trust you today. And trust you in today. That you will take care of tomorrow. And that you will provide tomorrow. Thank you Father. Thank you Lord. We also present those that even right now are challenged with their, maybe their children at home. Online. And maybe even struggling with the time frame, maybe balancing work and balancing um, being able to be there or to help their children with homework or even uh, with the discipline of, of actually studying, getting online. I ask you, God, that you cause the children to be compliant and to be helpful, even to their mothers right now. These things we ask. And we thank you, God. Lord, for keeping every mother gainfully employed, Lord, that they will not 
be lessen of their income. God, but you keep them in their jobs, in their positions. And we ask you, God, that when we come out of this, that there will be increase. That there will be increase. Because they've trusted you even yes. in all of this. We thank you, Lord, for someone, Lord, that is not yes. saved, has not come to that personal relationship with you. I ask you, God, that they'll turn to you and not maybe look at the models that they've seen, not think it's all about just being in a, a church building, but, Lord, that they will in this time seek to develop a personal relationship with you through listening, hearing the word, receiving the word, through just simply having a conversation to, with you, praying to you, and also just listening, listening to hear if they receive an answer even through the spoken word today. Yes. Or if you speak to them through a song, or if you speak to them through just maybe someone just randomly calling them and sharing the gospel with them. I ask you, God, that you call, cause backsliders to return to you too. Yes. <laughs> Lord, they departed from their first love. But you've been calling them, you've been drawing them, you've been speaking to their hearts. You've, you've been reminding them of their humanity and, and how fragile life is. Cause them to run back to you and not to feel guilty, but simply ask for forgiveness. This is what we ask. We bless your name. We ask you, God, that you'll keep all of us in this time that we're in. Keep us, oh God, as we pray every day and as we ask for every day, not just on behalf of ourselves, but on behalf of our children, our family, yes. our neighbors, our loved ones, Lord, our extended families, Lord. We ask you, God, that you keep them all in keep good health. Them, Lord. Keep them, God, I, I would love and I'm sure others would love to prove you in this time how, how good you are to the people that love you that worship you and praise you. And how good you are because of the prayers that we pray to cover those that don't even have a relationship with you or know you or sought after you. Oh God, I ask you, God, that you bless my neighbors. And I'm just talking about even the very development that I live in. Keep sicknesses and diseases from us. Keep us healthy. Oh God, yes. bless World Harvest. Bless every partner that is, that is a part of World Harvest. Bless our friends and families, even abroad, wherever they are, Lord, whatever country, whatever state they're in. Lord, we ask you, God, that you cover them, keep them, bless them, protect them. God, I thank you, Lord. Even in the time that we're in ministries, ministries are finding and seeing the challenges, Lord, Yes. And we ask you, God, that you'll keep the doors of churches, of ministries open. Yes. Oh, God, in this time, Lord, even bringing, cause more than enough to come in so that we can help those that don't have enough. Yes. That's what I ask of you all also, God. So I thank you, Lord, for everyone that even during this time, that is generous, that is still giving, that is still supporting whether it's this ministry or the other ministries that they're a part of. I thank you, oh God, thank you. for your kingdom must thank increase. You, there must be increase. And I believe that in this time, it will be exponential increase. Not just multiplication, but exponential increase. I thank you, oh God. And I ask your blessings to be upon everyone now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bless your holy name. And say that you are a great, big, wonderful God. And thank you, God, for all of your provisions. Amen and amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. I want to thank you all so much for, for tuning in today and for uh, listening to the word. I didn't realize I prayed as long as I did. But uh, thank you for staying tuned in. And uh, our prize is that God will continue to keep you. And mothers, uh, just enjoy today. Um, enjoy your day, whatever your children do, whether it's a car that they make themselves or if they're going to cook dinner. Are you looking forward to cook dinner today? <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
It, it sounds like I'm going to be a slave around the stove today. Oh, Pray for dear. me, Greg. Oh, <laughs> no, but I love cooking, so uh, it's not a chore. Amen. We're going to just um, end before we go to our, to our out throw. We're just going to um, read uh, Psalms 91, which we've been doing for a while now. Um, and this is what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread up on the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, says the Lord. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, says the Lord, and I will answer him, says the Lord. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and showing my salvation. Can everyone say amen. Amen. amen? amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. What I'm going to um, just say, I, I, I hope I can, I did not take a note, but um, for everyone that is graduating, especially, especially um, high school or college, um, we want to just say congratulations to you. Um, and I'm not going to really call out as any specific names. I want to just make it, sure that we congratulate everyone. We know that um, maybe it's not the way that you wanted it to be, but um, you're going to remember this and this, even in a time like this, what I want you to focus on is to be driven to success, to succeed, all right? So that's how you're going to interpret this moment, that this is going to cause me to be of great success. So again, Congratulations for working hard, not just this year, but through the years, and for all of your achievements that you've uh, come to, we celebrate with you, and we want to say God bless you, and um, every door of opportunities will be open to you. So God bless you, and congratulations to you on your um, graduation day. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Thank you for tuning in. Please, again, we'll be live on Wednesday night, uh, Bible study. Thank you. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this powerful message. And now, a few announcements. Thank you for your continued support of World Harvest Community Church of God. There are a few ways you can give today. Via our cash app, dollar sign, W-H-C-C-O-G. Via Givelify by searching World Harvest Community Church of God. For other means of payment, such as PayPal, credit, or debit card, please go to our website at whccog.com. If you prefer to pay by check, make checks payable to World Harvest Community Church of God and mail to P.O. Box 323, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33302. Thank you. God bless. Due to COVID-19, all live services and events have been suspended until further notice. Please join us for our online services every Sunday at 11 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. You can do so on Facebook Live 
at WHC space COG on YouTube at WHCCOG live or on live stream at WHCCOG.com. We look forward to fellowshipping with you. Thank you and God bless.